What's up YouTube? I'm the nice one and today we are making a wizard cat type of character like a tabaxi wizard. Hopefully you like the video. Uh, this is going to be a sped up video of me just kind of modeling the character but I'm going to talk through what I do. I'm going to call out any shortcuts I did so that you guys can follow along as well. Uh, I'm just trying to save you time by not making this video too long so hopefully I can keep it under 20 minutes. But anyway with that being said let's uh, let's just get straight to it. Okay, so to get started, let's make a plane, and then let's bring down the plane subdivisions to one. Once we do that with a single face, I'm going to add a couple of um, edge loops around the model, and then start shaping around that plane into a general front-facing shape that I want of the cat. So you see how I have my mirror modifier on, and you see how I'm using the vertex tool to kind of move things around and adjust. Once I'm happy with the general shape, I'm going to extrude it out to give it some width, and now I'm going to work on the side face, so that it kind of creates a profile of the cat that I also want. Again, I'm working off using edges and kind of rounding off the the initial kind of square shape so it looks more rounded. So obviously the snout is going to be protruded farther out than the cheeks. And I'm also using the vertex tool to kind of position the vertexes in a way that makes kind of like a triangular shape that you might expect from a tabaxi um, type of character. At this point, you're going to see me doing a lot of kind of tweaks to kind of get the general shape. But what I might recommend is making a general sketch first of both the front, back, and side face. And then in Maya, bringing that in as a background image so that you can kind of just overlay it and then you can just follow along with your drawing. So you see me kind of tweaking around the shape of the head, giving it some thicker cheeks, a bit of a nose bridge area right there using by adjusting the edges. Um, I'm adding some bevels here and there to sharpen the edge because I know when I go into smooth preview, it's just going to look like a big blob. So adding bevels will help make things look sharper. Uh, yeah, so just keep that in mind. Again, I'm just tweaking out the cheeks a little bit so it looks like it's got kind of like whiskers coming down. Uh, I'll add whiskers later on in the future, but generally I, would, I really wanted this head to kind of get the overall rough shape first before I started adding detail. And kind of like what we always do before, right? You start off with a very rough shape and then go from there. Now that I'm happy with the front face, I'm just going to round off the back of the head, the back of the skull. And so you see me extrude and pull out from the back flat plane so that it looks a little more rounded. Um, here, the mirror X modifier really helps because when you rotate one edge on the Y axis, it also rotates it on the opposite edge on like basically the negative so that it's even on both sides. And so there you see me kind of working again, working off the smooth, smooth preview. And then I'm actually target welding a couple of vertexes there so that things look like, uh, look a little smoother. Um, yeah, target weld helps merge multiple uh, edges. And you'll find that actually in the channel box editor on the right hand side. Okay, yeah. And so as we keep going, doing a little more target welding, again, finessing the, fa the shape of the face a bit more until I get to a point that I'm very happy with. Um, rounding it off. Uh, obviously, you can just kind of spend forever tweaking these kind of things as to, to whatever liking you want, but I suggest get it to a point that you're happy with and then kind of move on and come back to it once you've had some time to think about it and stew a little bit. Yeah, so I think this is looking pretty good so far. Uh, I'm going to tweak some of the head again. Now, actually, what I'm going to do is add the ears. So instead of making ears individually, I knew that I wanted to make the ears a part of the face because ultimately, like there might be elements where like a cat might lose its wizard hat or something. So I need to make sure that it looks like the ears are also part of the head. And so I extruded out from the top of the head and then just kind of pointed the edges using the target weld feature. And now I was just kind of modifying where the vertexes are, doing a couple of rotations of uh, edges here and there so that it looks a little more rounded. And then also flattening the front of the edges so that it looks like it's flat, the ears are flat and facing forward, kind of like how you might expect a typical cat ear to look. And yeah, so again, I remember when I was doing this, I was having a lot of trouble getting the ears exactly kind of how I wanted it. Like I wanted them to be kind of cartoonish, like really, really big, but they ended up almost looking like mouse ears. So it kind of bothered me a little bit here and there. So I do end up spending a little bit of time here really tweak it to the point that I'm happy with using a lot of target weld, um, adjusting a lot of faces, bring flattening out some of the at faces so that it has a zero scale on like the x-axis. But yeah, I feel like eventually I get get to a point that I'm happy with. And then I, 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 I remember I do come back to it later on in the future to really tweak it and fix it up a little bit. 
But at this point, I think I'm okay with generally how it is. So I move on towards the hat. The, again, how we did, similar to how we did the face, we start with a plane, like a flat plane, and then add some edge loops, and then just modify the edge loops to make the shape of the hat that we want. And then scaling it up a little bit in there, and then extruding up to, to make the, create the uh, top of the hat. You know, adding a bevels to kind of uh, pinch it here and there. And then obviously modifying the head so that it fits the hat a bit more accurately. So that's what you see me doing here. Um, again, this one worked out a bit nicely by I, by uh, just doing a lot more edge loops and uh, by target welding a lot of things. The, I got the pointed edge by obviously target welding to the tip of the point and then making it by scaling it to the bottom. So that's how you get that effect. And also, you see how I'm flopping the hat on one side. Obviously, the hat isn't going to be perfectly symmetrical on both sides. So you turn off the object X symmetry and then just modify some of the some of the vertices to kind of change their position and bring it down on the y-axis or something so that's what you see me doing here uh, i'm now adding some more edge loops some bevels to sharpen off the tip of the brim of the hat and i want to again add a little more variation at the at the the top of the hat so it looks like it's almost crumpled like as if it's oversized for the cap that was a i thought that was a nice effect here I'm tipping, uh, pointing it a little bit so it's not too flat. Kind of like making it look... Um, the inspiration for this one is, uh, what's it called? The Sorting Hat. The Sorting Hat from Wizard of... Uh, not Wizard of Oz, Harry Potter. Uh, I wanted to have that kind of feel, that kind of shape to it. Um, but I was quite happy with how it ended up in the end. You see those creases? I created that by beveling a single edge and it creates what looks like a crease in the hat. So. It um, um, almost makes the effect that it's like multiple pieces sewn together. Here, I just took a quick break and I came back. And what you see there is actually a base model that we had made in a previous video. So I'll drop a link down below um, just so that I don't have to talk over what I did there. But basically, we copy in a base model that we had made previously as a starting point. And here we're just making um, a scarf. So again, taking a flat plane, extruding it out, making sure our object X symmetry is on, extruding it out around the neck so that it looks like it kind of shapes the neck and then adding some thickness to give it a bit more uh, kind of substance. I'm doing the same thing here now. Once I'm happy with the scarf, uh, I believe I'm making what's called a shawl or kind of like a, a tunic. Uh, I do the same thing, flat plane, mold it around the shoulders and the neck uh, in a flat geometrical way. Uh, get it up, modifying some of the vertices to kind of look like it kind of molds the shape of the body that we have here. And then once I'm happy with how it looks, I add a bit of thickness and I check it out in smooth preview mode. I actually deleted a center face there because I knew that I didn't want it to be kind of like a second scarf on top. I wanted it to kind of look like it has a clasp on top. And so now I'm beveling the edges at the top of the shawl so that it looks like uh, it looks like it has a sharper kind of, it looks very thick, like it's made out of leather um, and it has a sharper edge. So again, beveling it using a factor, I believe I use 0.1, and I divided it into two edges. So two, factor of two, split by, factor of 0.1, split by two. And now I'm making that clasp I mentioned before. I just took a basic uh, square shape, uh, I changed it a little bit to make it kind of a triangle, uh, triangle uh, rectangle shape. And then once I'm happy with one half of it and it's perfect symmetrical. I use the mirror modifier to flip it on the opposite end and then use the bridge tool to connect the, the aligning edges. So that obviously saves you some time when, it, when you're working with a symmetrical object. Again, now we're making the robes. So start with a flat plane, add the line of symmetry straight down the middle and add a few more edge loops and then extrude out around the edges, making sure your mirror modifier is on. Extrude out to shape it around the body and then mer and then uh, bridge at the very end and then extrude it down to the bottom to make it look like it's kind of a kind of like a long jacket or a robe. And then uh, at this point, I kind of pointed it towards the profile of the body because I knew the tail would jump out from the back, which is why it rises at the back there. So just kind of try and think ahead about your model and think forward as to what you think you're going to need to do. Here we go. I'm scaling it down again. 
uh, I'm adding a few more edge loops because I actually, I think I screwed up here. Some of the edge loops didn't quite take or they weren't perfectly symmetrical. And so when I extruded, they ended up having like weird positions. So just be careful of stuff like that. Make sure to go into wire mode and double check that everything's perfectly symmetrical. Here, I'm just making a flat uh, robe straight down the center. I didn't need to smooth preview it because I knew that it, was, it wasn't gonna be too, I wanted to save on some polygons there. So I just kind of flattened it out. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing here. Uh, again, I'm bevel I made it have that triangle bottom by beveling the edges. Uh, yeah, beveling the edges really helps sharpen off how um, two how two vertices curve between how the ver how basically the the vector is drawn between two points. Beveling it sharpens off that vector, and then it makes it look like it's a harder edge. If you if you ever work with, I assume most of you work with like Illustrator vectors and stuff like that. So it's it's pretty much the same, pretty much a similar concept. Uh, again, adding a few more details, kind of like under like adding a cape, a few more robes underneath to make it look like layered. Because I know wizards aren't like knights where they have armor on top of armor and stuff. They're more like layers of clothing and like magical robes and stuff like that. So I want to get that effect of, yeah, just basically layers of cloth and leather and uh, heavy fabrics. Here I'm just making the sleeves now. So similar to how we did the body and the neck, you start off at the shoulder and then form a basic kind of a cylinder around the arm in the shape that you like, and then extrude out to kind of fit the rest of the hand. Yeah, and then making sure the preview modifier is on, maybe adding a few more creases here and there so it looks like it crinkles a little bit just to give it a little more realism. Now I'm just adding, I actually took the scarf I had made earlier and used it as an asset to kind of like a cuff, uh, just to save myself some time because I knew that wasn't going to be too detailed of an area. So I thought it was okay to save it there. And then I used a mirror modifier to perfectly reflect on the opposite end. Just adding a nose there. Uh, it was just basically a square that was rounded off with a smooth preview and then added a few edge loops. So just a, yeah, just take a square, add a few edge loops, and then maybe rotate the front face so that the top of the square is protruding out a little farther so it gives that nose shape. Here I'm making kind of like a, like a, what, what do you call it, breastplate. Um, so I took a cylinder and I'm kind of placing it on top of the robe so it looks like it's metal that's sitting on top of the robes underneath. Uh, and I'm gonna actually bevel the edges so that it looks very sharp compared to the rest of the softer fabric. That's what really helps differentiate between, well, at least when you're modeling. For me, it helps differentiate what is fabric and what is metal based on how hard the edges are and how sharp the lines are between edges. And then I added just a little bit of trim there to kind of really push home the fact that this thing is like a metal piece, piece of armor. Now here I'm making the feet. Uh, this one was a bit of a struggle, I won't lie to you. So I started off with a cube so, and then just added a few edge loops, one down the center and then two adjacent to it. And then just started kind of modifying the edge loops and then bringing it up here and there, like bringing it up towards the heel because it almost looks like cats are always on their toes. So I wanted that effect. And, and then I added like three little toes kind of protruding by bringing out two edges in the center, bringing it back a tiny bit. But yeah, I remember this foot, well, it gave me a bit of a struggle, I won't lie to you. So it, it, it might take, if y'all if y'all are following this kind of like as much as you can, um, if y'all are following this, uh, hopefully you can, it'll help, but just feel free to kind of experiment and see what works for you. Maybe you can come up with a more efficient way of doing things and let me know. Like, obviously I think we're all in the same boat, you know? I'm just trying to save you guys time and effort like from making the same mistakes I did. Um, so that you don't have to have the same headaches I'm experiencing. So if you have better ways of doing things, please let me know. I'm happy to kind of take advice that way. Um, but yeah, okay, cool. So I'm quite happy with the feet at this point. And then I'm just going to modify the base model's um, legs a bit so that it looks like it fits the feet a bit more appropriately. Uh, and then once I'm happy with that, I'm actually just going to mirror it on the opposite end. Uh, so that it looks exactly the same. Again, mirroring is is quite the lifesaver when it comes to this stuff. Here is the fun part of making the tail. So I started with a cube and then extruded out one face and then kept scaling it up slightly so that it looks kind of like, makes this kind of like squirrel tail kind of effect. Um, and then I started rounding off some of the edges by kind of bringing them out and then bringing others in so that it makes more of a octagon shape. 
And then I was quite happy, honestly, with the tail, how it is right now. I wanted to add more geometry to add like more grooves, but I, for a moment I thought I might just paint that in later in texture paint mode. Here what you see me using is actually a proportional editing to kind of make the tail a little more um, uneven and uh, kind of proportionally edit different parts of the tail so it kind of curves up a little bit. And then at some point, for some reason, I thought of Naruto, so I wanted to make it like the three tails. Even though the the cat, the cat, uh, the cat's the cat spirit animal is actually two tails. I think it's a two tail. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but yeah. So I made it a three tail cat, kind of like a nine tail fox or something. But anyway, here, here um, I'm making a crown. So again, I take a flat plane, uh, extrude it, make it single plane, add a couple of edge loops, and then make it in the shape of a crown that I like. And then I extrude out the uh, strap around the around the crown of the head. And then here I'm just kind of sequentially sequentially adding thickness to the the main crest <coughs> to make it look like it's more more of like a like a metal jewel piece on top of leather. And then obviously I'm just going to edit the strap a little bit so that it fits a little more appropriately around the cat's head, position it down like that, and then yeah, we're good to go. I imagine that crown is kind of like a headband of intellect if any of you play D&D. Um, actually, this character is going to be a uh, one of the main characters for the show. Um, so I'm kind of weird about showing you how to do it, but anyway, I'm sure it's fine. Anyway, uh, now I'm making, since she's a wizard, uh, all famous wizards in D&D always have their spell book. Uh, so that's what we're doing here. We're just making a book, and it's actually quite simple. We take a plat we take a cube, and then we add a couple edge loops where we would expect the um, hard the hard covers to be, and then extrude some thickness out so that it protrudes a little bit. And then there we just uh, added a couple edge loops, and then adjusted how they made it uneven in terms of how they are how they're sitting so that it looks like pages on a plane and then at this point i'm kind of using another previous asset we had made actually the clasp we had made earlier and then i'm just going to actually uh kind of twist it around and make it look like it's a clasp that's closing the book um just to save my time from remaking a similar model anyways you know um yeah i think that's usually okay depending on what you're working with uh, and there you go. Now we got a book with three clasps around it. I thought it looked quite nice. It's kind of like a forbidden book, I imagined. Um, and now I'm just going to add uh, another kind of... This is where I believe the starting of the strap goes, because I wanted the book to go around the character. So I'm going to position it and kind of make it look like it's a satchel bag for the, for the tabaxi. And uh, yeah, now I'm just going to take a plane and then kind of make it like a strip and basically wrap it around the character to make it look like it's a leather like a leather uh, shoulder strap kind of like a kind, kind of like a bag a satchel a satchel or a purse or something but yeah so that's how that's turning out and uh yeah once i'm happy with the plane i'm basically just going to extrude it add some thickness to it um and then round it off so that it looks a little more like cloth and then duplicate it on the opposite side so that it still looks like it's kind of wrapping around one shoulder and going to the other end yeah, I'm quite happy with how the model is turning out at this point. And then once I'm happy with this book, I believe I move on towards making what I what I think is a staff. Because uh, what what D and D wizard is complete without their iconic kind of staff, kind of like uh, the Elder Wand or Gandalf's white white uh, cane, you know? So basically to do that, I'm starting off with a, I'm actually gonna start with a jewel at the top. And uh, so I basically, basically make kind of like that Sims, um, what do you call it? The Sims triangle diamond shape. I wanted to make that kind of like the top of it. Um, oh, and then I remember at this point, uh, I was like, oh, like I want to add a little more detail to the bottom of the robe. So I made these kind of like tassels hanging down and I remember that they were going to tie in with the staff because they're actually going to represent the top of the jewel. So you see me adding the tassels there. And then I'm going to scale up the jewel here. And then this is going to be the staff it's kind of like top piece. And so I take a cube. I take a cylinder. I reduce the amount of division so it's more of like a octagon. And then I just add a couple of details here and there to kind of give it like a staff head. And then once I'm happy with it, we're pretty much there. So now we got this... Uh, cute little tabaxi cat character hopefully y'all were able to follow along with that tutorial a little bit i wanted to try and make these videos a little shorter so that it doesn't take up too much of your time anyway hope you liked the video i'll talk to you guys later okay be safe out there take care
Thanks for watching the video. If you like my content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let me know down below what you want to see next or just check out some of these other great videos. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you later.